Hi, and welcome to day six of our basic course, everyone. Can you believe it's almost over? It's just gone by so fast because we've learned and done so much. So I'm starting today's class today by talking about the color inspiration for my page. So these photos were taken at the It's a Small World ride located in Disneyland, which it's very adorable. There is a lot of inspiration I could find in these photographs. So the colors here are based on the buildings in my photographs. So you can see in this building there's some gold, white, and I also have this gray card stock and that's where I got those color ideas from. And then there's this sign here so I chose chose this kind of purplish color and I, I'm also using 12 by 12 mint grid paper because there's kind of that blue minty color in the sign as well. So one idea is to look at a specific photograph from your photo collection that you're using and get some color inspiration from that. I'm also going to be using this silver ink today because there it's hard to see in the video but there is some gray and silvery elements on the It's a Small World building. So of course that is one way I do it a lot actually is pulling inspiration for my layout directly from my photos. And I also just showed uh, these are some gold stickers from Doodlebug and they've been well used so that's why they look kind of scattered. But I'm going to be using those today later on and I also have these dies and you are also welcome to use dies today if you but it is optional but I will be using them for my page. So I have two new patterns for us to try out today. On the left, it's a column pattern and the right is a row pattern. So the left pattern is pattern number 364. And as you can see, it's three separate columns. Some of our column pages have two, two, two columns and some of them have more than three. The column patterns also go well with pinwheel patterns but today I'm actually going to be using a row pattern, which goes well with the column patterns. And the row pattern is kind of the opposite of the column pattern. That the column patterns, they line up, all the elements line up vertically, but the row patterns line up horizontally. So go on the pattern gallery and check out the column and row patterns. Remember... On the left is pattern 364 and the right is pattern 320 if you want to go ahead and print them out or look them up on your desktop computer. So I just pointed out on the right side there's this brown section and that means it's hand cut only. We don't have a die that's this size, it is very big, but you can adjust that pattern by changing the size. So instead of making it the hand cut size, we're going to divide it into five two by two square sections. So we're actually gonna be using that die from set A. So I hope that makes sense. So you, if you don't wanna use the hand cut options because you don't have a mat or you're not interested in hand cutting, you can adjust it so you can use the dies instead. So today I wanna use the two by two die I'm also going to be using this decorative die, and if you remember from one of our previous classes, I can see in the packaging that it's blue, just like set A, and I can also check out the size, and I know it will fit a 2x2 two two space, so you are welcome to use a decorative die that will fit in there today, and I do suggest following along. This is kind of an introduction to simple pattern adjustments, so you can do whatever you want with them, but I suggest today to follow along with me so you can learn how to do it and then you can be more confident when you want to switch it up on your own. So on the left here, I have these four one inch squares, but I want it to match the other side with the where those orange strips are. So I'm going to actually turn that into a one by four strip and that'll be cut with set D, which is the orange set. And of course, I have my permanent marker here so you can see. You don't have to mark your own page, but I'm just giving you a visualization of how the page will look in the end. I also wanted to change this bottom, this bottom pink one and make it bigger so it'll actually be a 4x4 four four square. And I, I'm doing that because on the right side I have those 2x2 two two 
blue squares and I wanted to have a square element on the other side so they both match. But because of that, that purple section will become a 5x4 section cut with set C. I do need to shorten that so I can fit in that 4x4 four four square below it and still also have room for that 1x4 strip on the top. All right, so the reason why I did choose both of these patterns is because they have quite a few of those 2x3 rectangle spaces. So they match up pretty well. They go well together. But for me, at least, I don't have enough photos to fill in all those 2x3 rectangles. So I'm actually going to combine some of them together. Pretty much all the ones at the very top and the ones at the bottom. They're going to be combined to become a three by four space, just like on the right side. You can see the two on the bottom left and top right here. So they're gonna match with the other page still. And I still have two of those two by three spaces to also still match with the other side. So I hope that all made sense. And I hope, like I said, you're following along. If you have any questions about the pattern adjustments, you can ask me below in the comments. So. That's also an idea if you feel like there's a lot of spaces where you can't really, you don't have any photos or any other elements that'll fit, or you don't have enough photos, like in my case, you can combine them and make them larger. All right, so I think I'm all done adjusting here, so... I hope you can see the markings I made with the permanent marker, but if not, I am going to show it again as we are cutting. Right now I'm just going to write down A so you can remember that this will be cut with die set A and not hand cutting. I also want to talk about this die real quick. This is the Canterbury Border Die, and if you look at the packaging, there is an orange one, which is the one I'm holding. So that lets me know, okay, that's orange, so it'll fit in this 1x4 orange space as well. So you're welcome to use any border dies if they fit in that 1x4 space today. The 2x2 die I'm using is called the Wind Spinner die, and I'm going to be showing you a little fun embellishing technique with it today. It's totally optional, like I said, to use those decorative dies today. You do not have to use them, but... Hey, it's a fun opportunity, and again, if you don't have them today, you can definitely come back and redo this course with those dies. So for today, you're going to need die set A. Even though there's not a lot of blue in the pattern, we adjusted it, so we know we need A right. And I had set B by accident. We've been using B a lot, but today, for once, we're actually not going to be using set B. We also have set C, which you can see there's a lot of pink on here, and we have set D to make those 1x4 strips. And just a reminder, I'm going to take a look at the sizes I need for my pattern. So for example, there's a 3x4 space, and I am going to be layering them today, so you can use the layering die or the 3x4 die that fits the grid to over your photographs to make sure your subjects will fit within those spaces. We are also going to be cutting with the 2x3 die from set C, so make sure your subjects fit into that within that small space. All right, we're ready to go. Let's finally get started with making our page. First, we're going to be using die set C. We need to make that 5x4 size, and we need to make 8 3x4 sizes because they're on both sides for a layout and there's quite a few of them so all right so let's pull out die set c and as usual i like to start with the biggest die so i'm gonna i just grabbed the five by four size die and i'm assuming you did too so just a reminder on the pattern there was that purple shape the six by four size from set b but we needed to sh shorten that size because we are going to be fitting in a 4x4 four four square below it. So when you're doing these adjustments, and this will come easier to you over time as you get to know the dies and know the patterns that you'll learn which sizes belong to which set of dies. So because I shortened it a little bit, I knew I needed to switch over to die set C rather than die set B. All right, so got that first one cut. 
So now I'm gonna put this one away and we're gonna grab that three by four size. And again, it's, <laughs> we're gonna be cutting it eight times. So get ready. I'm just using the same color card stock for all of them to make it easier. But you are welcome to use more than one cardstock color. So as usual, just like last time, well, what we've done every time pretty much is we cut around the die with some pair of scissors and roll it through the machine. And as usual, my die is at an angle. So I do that every time. <laughs> so I got the first one. This is number two. And I will not be doing this today, but one trick you can do is you can double up on your paper. I can't guarantee this will work on every card stock. I definitely wouldn't use it on pattern paper because that's usually pretty thick. So if it's thicker paper, I probably wouldn't try this, but you can double up on the paper. Meaning you can actually have two sheets of paper and cut it at the same time with your die. But I am going to warn it doesn't always work depending on the paper. If it's a thin paper like white is usually a pretty thin paper it'll probably work. And I also want to note that um, doubling up is useful because it does get the cutting faster. So instead of eight individual cuts like I'm going to be doing you can get this done in four cuts. So it is faster, but I will tell you that I find, for me anyway, with this machine I'm using, when I double up, it does leave a more obvious crease around the edge. I mean, it usually leaves a crease, but I find when I double up, it looks like it even more. So try it out if you want to. If you, the, the creases don't bother you, you are welcome to do that trick. I didn't do it today. But that is one way to get these cuts faster. So you're welcome to try that out now. And again, I wouldn't use it on pattern paper because that is usually way too thick. And sometimes a pattern paper, you want to cut in a certain direction anyway. And I wouldn't use that um, trick for photos either. I don't think it would cut very well at all if you used it on photos. And... Some machines, like the We Are Memory Keepers die machine, you can adjust the settings, so that might be a good machine to try that on. The Big Shot, the Sizzix machines, they press down pretty hard, so I think that's why when I double up it gives like an even uh, deeper crease around the edge. Alrighty, I got this one done. I think this might be my last one. Alright, I'm going to roll it through as usual. It actually was pretty quick considering there is eight of them to cut, so that was actually pretty easy. And now they're all done! Alright, so I'm going to put this one away because next we need to get out die set A. To show my pattern again. So yes, it shows a 3x4 shape, but I wanted to make it taller to make it the 4x4 square size. So instead of using set C, I need to switch over to set A because that has all the squares, right? So you always know all the squares are in set A. And the strip sizes, so the really long skinny shapes are always almost always either set, die set D or E. E has the longer ones. So those are some easy ways to remember. Now B and C, they're both rectangular shapes that are kind of similar. But again, as you've been working with the dies a lot, you'll know what dies go with which set. All right, I decided to make this one a different color because it's gonna match with the two by two squares I make later on. So that was pretty easy, right? It's one of the larger dies, so it's pretty quick, and that was the only 4x4 four four size we needed. All right, now we're going to add them to the page, so I have my repositionable glue. And with this one, I know I have a row. It shows on the image of the four one-inch squares, so I know 
that pink size is three squares long, so I count three. And then I know I need to count four more, and I know that this rectangle can be placed right underneath there. But maybe at this point you know where the thing, <laughs> where each block needs to go. Maybe you've had enough practice, but just in case, you can still do the counting method to know where each element needs to be placed. And the square we know just goes right underneath here. And I do have this ink, so I'm just gonna add my ink around it. And if you are a chalk ink fan, it, it I like using chalk ink. It makes a fun distress look, and sometimes it just adds a little bit of, kind of makes your mats pop a little more. I mean, this was kind of a boring gray color, and that silver edge kind of gives a little more interest, I think. <laughs> I'm just going to let it dry off. And of course, I don't want to get any ink on my grid paper, so I grabbed a sheet of cardstock. Of course, I line it up right underneath there. And again, that pink size became the square, and the purple uh, block needed to be smaller, which is why we cut it with set C. And now I need to put four of these on this page. So I have one here at the top and on the other side, and I'm going to have two at the bottom. And yes, on the pattern it shows the two by three square shapes. But remember we wanted to make them bigger because in some cases I, you know, we don't have enough photos to fill in all those spaces. All right, some of you have probably seen that on the cardstock or maybe even pattern paper, you get these rough edges from the dies. So right here, I'm using the little chiseler tool. We do sell it on snapandcrop.com. It's typically, it's for the hand cutting stuff. We use it to lift up the photos from the mat to put it on the grid paper, but it is a handy tool to get those rough edges off. I just rub it on the sides like this it's really fast and easy. It just gets rid of those rough edges. So your mats look a little bit cleaner. So, and you don't have to use a little chiseler. You could probably find something similar around your home. I just don't recommend using your finger. <laughs> um, I have gotten myself paper cuts that way. Probably not my smartest move, <laughs> but I've, I have plenty of paper cuts from doing this stuff but anyway that's just one little tip I have about taking care of those edges really you just need something to smooth to get rid of those rough edges all right and I hope the resizing makes sense so basically instead of having two two by three sizes we combined it and when you combine it on the grid, it pretty much makes a three by four shape. And in this case, we were able to still use the die from set C. All right, now the left side of our layout is finished. Now we need to add these four three by four square spaces or blocks on the right side of our layout. So it's pretty clear this one goes on the very bottom left and the other one goes on the very top right. And we know these two just go right next to them. They're just in the horizontal direction instead of the vertical direction. So the, the placement for those was pretty easy. And again, I'm using my little chiseler tool to scrape off those rough edges. And again, I'm using my repositionable glue and just a reminder, with the repositionable glue, you don't have to use a lot of it. You just need to put it in each corner and a little bit in the center, and you're good. I just don't... <laughs> I'm just helping you out so you don't waste a lot of glue. I see a lot of people use tons of it when they don't need to. Makes it last a lot longer, and we all appreciate that, right? Okay. And, of course, the grid paper is always handy so we can get are all these elements lined up correctly. All right, I'm gonna glue down this one again. 
And as usual, if you need to, you can always pause the video if you get behind or, you know, you're always welcome to rewind as well. Sometimes we miss a little detail or maybe next you know I got ahead of you and you're like, wait, wait. <laughs> That's the nice thing about the videos is you can rewind them as much as you need to and pause whenever you need to. Versus if you saw this in person, a little bit harder to rewind. <laughs> And you can go at your pace. Alright, I'm sticking on this last one carefully. Always take your time when you're putting it on the grid paper to make sure those lines are covered. Alright, got all these blocks down. And so now I'm going to be cutting some of the smaller elements here. So now we're going to make those strips and use die set A to make those two by two squares. All right, so let's get started with the cutting. All right, I have my patterns here, and the first thing I'm going to do is cut with the one by four die from set D. On the left side of our layout, on the very top, there's those four one by one inch squares. But remember, we're combining them to make a one by four strip instead. All right, so I'm also gonna be using the Canterbury border die. So if you have any decorative dies you would like to use, this is a great time to get them out. If you don't have them, that's fine. Um, just like we did yesterday, these, these dies are great for using on pattern paper. So you can use pattern paper or just plain card stock or uh, use it with a decorative die like I'm doing today. So I'm going to be cutting, just like now, I'm cutting with the 1x4 die from set D first, and this will be the background for the Canterbury die cuts. So it's going to be a white background, and then I'm going to have gold on top of it, which was inspired by the It's a Small World building. So it's going to look really neat in the end. I'm really excited about it. All right, so got the first one cut, and I'm gonna move on to the second one. And again, not doing this today, but if you wanna cut it faster, you can cut more than one paper at a time. Just be careful with these strip ones because it's easy for them to shift. So you may wanna make your paper a little bit bigger around the die if you are doubling up. All right, this is the last one. So cutting with this die is pretty easy. We just needed three shapes. So I have my background pieces done and those will go directly on the grid paper. All right, now I'm gonna cut with my decorative die. And again, this is optional. So you may be already done. And if you are not doing this, you can skip this part or you're welcome to watch as well just to see how this die works. The Canterbury die is really nice. Actually, it's a very, um, it's, it's one of those designs that kind of can go with a lot of different things, so. But I chose this one partially because it has this diamond shape and I don't think the ride necessarily has a lot of diamond shapes, but it does have a lot of triangle designs in the building. So I, you know, kind of was inspired the dies, actually both the dies, I'm going to be using the wind spinner in a little while. So both of these eyes were also, again, inspired by the It's a Small World building. So it's not even just the colors you need to find inspiration for. It's also your decorative elements. So yes, I chose these two die or decorative dies intentionally because it went with the theme of my layout. All right, I am gonna be using these tweezers and the decorative dies, they all have a circle or dot right in the corner usually, if not in the corner on one of the edges. So you can poke the tweezer through the die and get the die cut out. So I got my first one. And then I just have to clean it out. This paper is pretty thick, so I think for the next ones I'm actually going to roll the die through twice. 
So yes, with these decorative dies, some of them, like this one, are very intricate. And sometimes it's very helpful to roll it through twice, maybe even three times if necessary. Especially in this case, I think I really needed to because this paper I'm using is pretty thick. I think if it was a thinner paper, once would be good enough. Yeah, there's just one little part that didn't cut through, but it still looks good. All right, and cleaning. <laughs> Got to clean each spot off. And some of the decorative dies, if you want to double up on the paper to get it cut faster, some of the decorative dies will work, but I, I wouldn't probably do it on a die like this where it's so intricate because it may not really cut through on the way. The doubling up thing works pretty good on the basic dies, but on these intricate dies it may not work at all for some of them. And on this paper I did not want to waste it because it's, it's very nice gold paper. It's beautiful. I wish you could see it in person because the video doesn't do it justice. All right, so that was my last one, and you may have already been waiting for me to be done here, <laughs> which is fine. All right, so now I'm going to create the 2 by 2 squares, but I just wanted to show you real quick. So I made these embellishments ahead of time so I could save on time for this video. I will be showing you how to make it. This was made with the wind spinner set and it's a really neat design so I'll be showing that in a little while. But I just wanted you to know that I did make those ahead of time. So we are going to, I'm trying to get my pattern here. Alright so instead of making this hand cut border we're going to be making five two by two squares. And for today, I want to challenge you to be creative and basically do what you want on this page. You can make these all five photographs, maybe a mix of photos and paper, maybe make it all pattern paper, or use a mix of dyes and photos. Whatever you want to do here, be creative. And if you need to pause the video, you can, so you can make your final decision. Today, I'm going to be using decorative dyes and cardstock. So first I'm using the 2x2 two two die to cut the background for my wind spinner. So I made two of these background pieces already, so I'm just going to cut this one white piece. And I'm grabbing some gray cardstock to make the other two pieces. I didn't want all the squares to be all decorative dies because I thought that would be too busy. So when it comes to decorative dies, it depends on the dies. Some of them look really good if you used five in a row. And in that case, I would try to make the paper very simple. But for me, I felt like this die um, idea I'm doing is a little more intricate and I didn't want my page to look too busy. So this plain gray cardstock will kind of give your eye a break from those. So I'm going to cut this with the gray paper and again you can double up on your paper if you want to cut these squares even faster all right so I got those and now I'm going to show you the wind spinner so I'm going to be using my gold paper again I'm trying to get my stuff here so again the white paper will be my background and I'm going to be cutting with the 2x2 two two size and the 1x1 one one size from the set the wind spinner die also comes with a 1x3 die, but I will not be using that today. Okay, so I'm just going to put that aside now. I'm going to bring out my gold paper. This is the same paper I used to cut my Canterbury border die. And as usual, I'm just going to cut around the die cut. Put that here and I'm also going to be cutting and the nice thing about these is I can cut two at a time although now I only need one of the one by one inch dies and these dies are small enough I can actually put both of them on the plate and cut them at the same time so that is another trick besides doubling up on paper you if the dies are small enough you can cut more than one die at a time on 
in the dye machine. <laughs> Sorry, hope you caught all that. Pretty much, if your dyes are small, you can put more than one through the dye machine. There you go. <laughs> this paper's pretty thick, so I need to use my tweezers, or you could use your finger to punch out these excess pieces I don't need. You can even save the excess pieces for a different time if you would like to, to fill in another die cut. And again, I'm just using my tweezers to stick in the little hole that's usually right in the corners, on one of the corners. And this one by one inch one, I really need to use the tweezers because this <laughs> The space is really small, so the tweezers are handy for so many things, just for craft craft tweezers, I think, are a must for any crafter or scrapbooker. All right, I got that one done. So really quick, I just want to show you the inspiration for the wind spinner die. Well, not the wind spinner die, but the embellishment design. Let's see. I think I can find a bigger one. Here we go. So this is the design on the building that inspired me to create the design I'm doing and the wind spinner die kind of reminded me of the shape on this building. So but other than colors you can actually choose the dies based on your photographs. So both the Canterbury and the wind spinner dies were in my choice, my die choices were inspired by some of the designs in my photographs. So now we get to put each element on the grid paper. So first I'm going to put on the strips from die set D. And so I only need to put on this one on the left side of my layout. So I'm putting down my, putting on my background piece first. I just lined it up on the grid paper. And the Canterbury die is so intricate. I am using the Xyron sticker machine. It's just so much easier for these dies with very thin edges and that are intricate. So instead of worrying about getting glue around the edges, I'm just using the Xyron sticker machine. Then it will be all be sticky. All right, so that was easy. And now I get to put it on top of the my cardstock piece here. So just line it up carefully and now I'm just going to take the excess glue off. By the way, the Xyron sticker machine does make a repositionable glue as well. So this is not a permanent glue, although that is an option if you want that option, but they also do have the repositionable kind. All right, now I'm going to stick on these next two strips and they clearly go well this one goes underneath that pink block and the other one will go over on top of the other block so yeah I use the reposition repositionable glue and I just need basically one stripe across the die so now I have them on my grip paper and I'm going to use my Xyron sticker machine for these two die cuts again. It's just super handy. I'm so glad I have it. <laughs> I can't tell you it's if you're finding it difficult to use your dotto or whatever repositionable glue you're using, you can definitely I I suggest use uh, checking out the Xyron sticker create. It's, it's actually called the Xyron create a sticker. I'm using the smaller one in there. From my understanding, there is one that's a little bit bigger. So if you wanted to use it on the two by two corner stones, you may want to find the bigger one. I'm going to carefully glue this one on top of my cardstock piece. And again, I'm just rubbing the glue off with my finger here. And now I'm going to put on the second one. You guys may even be ahead of me at this point, <laughs> actually, because you may not be using any decorative dies. But again, that's fine. You can always skip the parts you don't need to watch. All right, so now I have these two gray squares. Remember, I had that four by four square. So to match with that one, I'm going to put 
ink on these ones. Super easy way to make your page pop. All right, and then I'm just going to put it on the side here so we can dry. All right, the second time I'm inking that. All right, so I'm done with my ink. And now, since I already put these ones together, I'm just going to go ahead and glue them down. <laughs> I have a little... um embellishment on top so it was kind of hard for me to put glue directly on there so I'm just going to put it on the grid paper whatever you need to do right <laughs> so next I'm going to show you how I created the shape I mean obviously I used the dies but there's one little trick I'm going to show you that you can get away with some dies but not all of them yeah, I decided to put this one on the side because the other one would be easier to watch from the center. So I'm going to put this one over here real quick. All right, so first you put the background piece on just like we did with the can or the other dies, whatever your die you're using. And now I'm going to add glue on the back of my wind spinner die. And this cannot fit into the Xyron sticker machine or else I would have used that, but that's okay. So I'm just going to carefully use my dotto around the edges, a little bit on the center. I'm just scraping off the excess glue on that cardstock so I can reuse it for another project. All right, so of course I carefully put this die on top of my background piece. And now I'm going to be using this one inch one, but you can see that there's that border around it because it's meant to fit on the grid. But I am going to cut that off carefully. You just need a pair of scissors and then I just cut around this loop. And I try to make sure the thickness is the same as the rest of the design. And here's the thing, even for me, it wasn't perfect. It won't make a perfect shape, but it'll still look really good. I mean, I don't think unless someone looked really closely they're probably not going to notice that it's not cut perfectly as long as you didn't cut through the loop or anything. So yeah, that's just one trick you can do if you want to make your embellishments a little more interesting. So I'm putting it in the Xyron sticker machine because that'll be much easier for me. All right. So now I'm going to stick this right in the center right here and you can tell it's easy to tell we're lining it up because both of them have holes right in the center and basically you put the little one right in the center of the big one I think the holes are the exact same size on both of them so it's easy to tell where to put it and so you can see it makes this really neat two-dimensional design and I'm just getting the excess glue off here on these small ones it gets a lot of glue in between the spaces so just cleaning that off it's quite a bit of it on there all right next I am going to put one of these little jewels and I just did that I used my tweezers to get it on there just so you know my head was in the frame and so I apologize that you weren't able to see that but basically you it's it's pretty much a sticker you can just stick right in the center so that's another idea with these dies is using little jewel things like that all right and I just glued the back of these gray squares and put them on top of the grid paper which was pretty easy right all right so I felt that the page currently look a little bit too busy and all of those gold parts were all by each other. So to spread it out, I'm actually switching the placement of the 1x4 border with the rectangle. So this is another way you can adjust your patterns is switching things up. It's really easy to do. I just switch places. So you can do that if you're feeling like your page looks a little bit too busy. 
this is an optional thing to do today, but something to keep in mind is you can just switch things around if it just doesn't work for your page or with your photos or embellishments, whatever you're using. All right, I just had some extra <laughs> glue on this one, and but now I'm done. And I think it looks good this way, so I'm glad I switched places. All right, so now we get to finally add the photos to our page to finalize this layout. So let's get started with the photos. All right, so I have my pattern here. So we see the purple space and usually you can just put a whole four by six photo on top of that, but we shrunk it down to a five by four space. So I'm gonna get the layering die out for this one. So hopefully you can tell the difference now between the dies that fit on the grid versus the layering dies that of course usually you would use for your photos to layer on top of your mats. All right, so I'm gonna stick it on top of this photo. Yeah, and since it's a four by six photograph, it is too small to fit directly on the grid paper, so. Usually with these bigger photographs, you pretty much have to mat them. The only way you can get away with that is if you printed a 5x7 photo instead. But for beginners, I recommend just trying it out the system with your 4x6 photographs. Alright, so we just cut that one. And now we're going to cut with... The one of the layering dies from set A because we need to fill in that four by four square space. So I'm going to get that set out, and grab the layering die, and I'm sure you are too. If not, you can always pause the video. All right, so I'm going to crop this lovely photo at the it's a small world ride in California. They have all these bushes cut into different animals, and it's really neat. I go to Disney World a lot in Florida, and they don't have that, so I like seeing the differences between the two parks. I also use washi tape with this die because, again, the die goes up right on the edge of the photograph. All right, so this one's cut. So these were the two biggest photos for our page, so those ones are done. And now we get to cut a bunch of photographs with the 3x4 layering size. So that's going to be, again, eight times. So I'm going to grab the layering die. If your photos do not fit within the, or I should say the subjects of your photographs don't fit within the space, you can just cut with a three by four size that fits the grid. But I had photographs that where the subjects did fit the layering size, so that's what I'm going to be using. So anyway, so this is my first photograph. It's the sign I showed earlier that says it's a small world. So this is a nice way to add a title to your page. So instead of making up my own title with letter stickers or dies, sometimes a photograph, especially when you're at a park and you're at an attraction, sometimes there's a sign and you can just use that as your title basically. It's kind of a nice way to put in a photo and a title. <laughs> I use that whenever. Whenever, you know, like if I'm at a national park, you know, it's fun to take a picture of the sign when you first enter in. And then you can, again, use that for journaling for your scrapbook page. All right. Now I have this one. Okay. So those were the two that are going to go the horizontal direction. And the rest of my photographs are going to be the vertical direction so this is a 4x6 photograph and the nice thing about this layering size is it can fit within that space. Now the one that fits the grid wouldn't be able to, but this one's small enough. See the die is going vertical even though the photograph is horizontal, but the die size is small enough it still can fit within that space. So that's one thing to learn is some of the layering dies are small enough I don't have, you know, even though this photo's 
horizontal, I can still make it the vertical shape. All right, so I just rolled it through the machine. And I'm done with this one. I just wanted that one little part in my photograph, so that worked out nicely. And then this one, of course, this is a vertical photo photograph. So that subject that subject works within this space. I'm going to roll that through as well. And again, I talked about you can make the cuts faster by layering paper on top of the die, like two sheets of paper, but I don't recommend doing that with the photographs because I don't think it would cut through very well. And plus one of them might end up shifting in your machine because you can't really tape them up with your die, you know what I mean? So yeah, I don't recommend doubling up with the photographs. I don't think it'll turn out very well. All right, so I got this one. It was kind of a bush that was cut in a rectangular shape, so it's kind of interesting. All right, this one, so the die is small enough, you can actually cut the same photograph twice. So I'll show you what I mean. So this one, I have it lined up on the left side of my photograph. I really love, there's this bush that's cut into a rhino and he has a bird sitting on him. <laughs> it's really cute. So I'm going to make my first cut now. So I'm going to roll this one through the machine. Okay. So I'm going to take this one out. So that's my first cut. So that will be one of my photographs. And now I'm going to use the same die again to cut on the other side. And I have done that before in previous classes, but this one's actually a bigger die than the other ones I used before. So as long as you obviously have to have um, the die on near the edge on both sides of the photograph in order to cut to. And sometimes it works out that way. If not, you can print the photo twice. All right, so I got the second one. And again, that was actually, it actually worked out because this was a horizontal photograph. If it was a vertical photograph, it would not have worked out that way. I have this one of the building. And again, there's that design that inspired my die choice. So yeah, I hope you from this series have learned to find inspiration from many things. My photographs are my first choice, but if I'm not using my photo, if I'm using pattern paper, I usually base the colors on the pattern paper. All right, we got all those done. So now we're going to be cutting with the two by three die from set C. So that's one of the smaller ones. I don't generally layer these dies because they're already pretty small if I'm using photographs with them. So I have this big photograph, but the subject I wanted to use was at the bottom here. And so that's what's nice about using these smaller dies is you can focus in more on a specific subject in your photograph. So I have that one and then this one. <laughs> I really love that horse, but I won't be using it with this page, unfortunately, but those little characters do fit within the two by three space, so I chose that. And again, because it's so small, uh, I'll crop it small enough, they'll be, you know, there's more focus on those little characters, whereas before they're kind of, when you have the horse in there, it's kind of in the background and it's not as noticeable. I'll have to save the horse for another page. All right, and this one shows little boat you ride on during the ride. And again, I'm actually going to be cutting this photo twice. So I have the boat done. And now I'm going to cut the building part of the photograph. Yeah, this is a good way to not have to print extra photos as well. <laughs> 
So if you can't fit the entire photo, if there's not enough room to fit the entire photograph, like in this case, the, it's an option to just make it two smaller photos. This one, there's this little face on the ride. Uh, this, I guess, face character, I don't know what to call him, but <laughs> I wanted the crop into that space so he gets more attention. All right, got this one. All right, here I got those little characters again. And so I wanted to get some new ones that I already, that I don't have already. So I'm going to carefully crop over them. And roll it through the machine. I'm not using washi tape, but if you need the washi tape, please use it. All right, so I got all of them done and now I get to add them to my layout. So I'm just going to start laying them out because I have a lot of photos here and I don't, I haven't chosen where I want the exact placements to be. So I'm just going to lay them where they fit. So obviously these ones go in the three by three, three by four spaces and the other ones go in the two by three spaces and it's pretty clear at this point where the two by three ones need to go on your pattern. All right, I'm just kind of quickly placing them down. So I just place them down and then I kind of decide where I want to change it. So let's see. All right, I think I'm going to switch these two because we have I have a lot of uh, the building photos on the left side of my layout and I'm going to change this because the building is on that top left and I want that other little building picture to be on the bottom right and then I have the two little character pictures so that kind of goes really well together or it looks um Symmetrical, not symmetrical. Um, anyway, it looks balanced. That's the word I'm looking for. All right, so I'm going to switch these two. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think those two. Those two right now across from me. All these across from each other look pretty good. Let's see. Yeah, I think I want to. Let's see. I like how it looks now. The top kind of shows those details of the building and the bottom shows those animal bushes. I think it looks good that way. The only thing I might do is switch these two photographs because the rhino, he's facing away from the rest of the photographs. So yeah, I think I'm going to switch these two. Alright, so I think the design of that page looks pretty good the way it is. So yeah, just take your time, uh, you know, take your time to place the photographs where you think they look the best. I'm pretty happy with this, with all this placement, so I'm going to go ahead and glue it down with my repositionable glue. Which I might have mentioned this before, but if you are using repositionable glue, which I suggest you do, you do not need to put permanent glue on top of it. The repositionable glue will become more permanent over time. And it is a good thing to use repositionable glue because even if you have chosen the right space, sometimes you don't put the picture on quite right because you have to eyeball it in this case. So sometimes you need to readjust and that's why I like using the repositionable glue repositionable glue over the permanent kind. Alrighty. Yeah, this is pretty much the easiest part of making any page is just gluing down the photographs. I'm sorry if you heard that. There was a truck that or a bus that went by, so you might have heard that in the background. Alrighty. 
And then I've got this glued down. So I'm guessing at this point the gluing down is pretty easy for you. Okay, this is the last photograph I need for the left side. Again, just take your time. I apologize. I know there's parts in the video where my hair is poking through. <laughs> so, I apologize. Thankfully, I don't think it's getting in the way too much. <laughs> but when I'm looking at the video, I'm like, oh, that's getting in the way. <laughs> So now I'm going to glue down on the right side of my layout. Okay. Yeah, with these smaller ones, I kind of just like to make one line diagonally in the middle and then two on the other corners. All right, I only got a few more photos to go. We're almost done, guys. <laughs> But I hope it's been fun making the layout and I made mine a little more intricate today whereas you probably made yours a little more simple most likely. So you actually might be done. <laughs> anyway, so I got this the last big piece. Now I have these two little ones. All right. And again, just take your time lining it up along the grid paper. Make sure those lines are covered up. And I have this last photo. And I'm finished. <laughs> it's finally done. So this completes day six of the basic course. I hope today you learned a lot about making pattern adjustments and that it was easy to understand. If not, please leave your questions in the comments below. I want to help you as much as possible so when you do it on your own, you're able to feel more confident. I'm really happy with the page I made today and I hope you are happy with yours. And of course, you can always change it and make adjustments as needed. All right, so for tomorrow, we are gonna be making a full, well not full, but mostly mosaic layout. So be prepared, have photos like flowers or similar subject to make your mosaic. Anyway, I hope you had fun today and I'll see you at the next class.